Welcome to Histofacts, where we journey along the chapters of time. Today we walk along the road of early Christianity with Rachel, Leo, Nia, Jasmary, and I, Anaya. While listening, don't be afraid to contribute to the discussion. Let's get started. The founder of Christianity was Jesus. The long-established biblical story is Jesus was birthed by a virgin woman named Mary, who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was born to die for our sins, and he was the Messiah. As Jesus grew older, he spread and taught the word of God. Around the age of 30, he was betrayed by Judas, one of his disciples, and crucified on the cross, leading to his death. He was resurrected by God and taken to heaven. A quick fact about Jesus is that at the age of 12, Jesus went on a pilgrimage with his mother, Mary, and father, Joseph. They and their family went to Jerusalem for a festival of the Passover. On their way back, they lost Jesus. When they found him at the temple court sitting with teachers, everyone was amazed by his knowledge of the Christian religion and God. Before Christianity, there was Judaism until it was pushed out and the Christian religion took over. The the principles of Christianity are called the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Thanks. On to Rachel. Christianity originated in the Roman Empire and emerged from Judaism around the first century. This began when the empire took over lands that were adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea, including the land that was occupied by the Jewish people. While under the strict control of the Romans, the Jewish people constantly rebelled in order to maintain their beliefs of monotheism. This continued on and on until the Romans established direct rule over the Jewish people, leaving no tolerance for any of their religious practices. This created a large revolt that resulted in many Jewish deaths. Jesus, who was Jewish, decided to teach the Jewish traditions, convincing people he would bring an end to Roman rule. He would also target priests that were known for gaining wealth and power from the Romans for keeping the Jewish people in line. After he died, for the next 40 days, Jesus' disciples claimed they saw him resurrect. This led to the vast spread of Christianity. At first, Romans treated Christianity as a small part of Judaism. Although the Romans persecuted people who didn't believe in their polytheistic ways, Paul of Tarsus began to spread it to more non-Jewish people. After almost four centuries, Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire in 395 CE, as they decided to recognize it as its own religion, not a part of Judaism. Within Christianity, there were a handful of strict core tenets. These are called the Ten Commandments. They are similar and were based around the Jewish commandments. They consist of no other gods before me, thou shalt not make unto thee graven image, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet. Along with this, Christianity has a set of basic beliefs. These are more predominant in modern time. Christians believe in monotheism, the life and death belief of the resurrection of Jesus, the belief that Jesus will return to earth again, the belief that Jesus was the Son of God, and that if you follow the teachings of Jesus, you will gain eternal life. Hi, my name is Nia, and I'm here to talk to you about social structure. When it comes to Christianity impacting the social structure, it becomes less about the teachings and more about the people teaching them. Although the teachings and sacred texts were used as prime evidence for many social changes, the church had huge amounts of political power, more specifically the head of the church, the Pope. And the Pope had power on par and even above kings, and that didn't really change until later in history. But because of this power, people 
of the church became part of the social hierarchy and was able to spark change. There are various examples of the church destroying or protecting the government or causing reform and revolution seen in the Crusades. But another example is the concept of Christian ethics, which came into play when transitioning from slavery to serfdom and affected how they cared for their widows, orphans, sick, and poor. Of course, there's always a bottom of the food chain, and in this case, that was anyone who wasn't Christian or who went against heaven. And people totally didn't use that to hide hidden biases. No way. Right? wrong. In medieval times, other religions were seen as pagan and people who followed them dissenters and heretics. Therefore, they were not treated as nicely as others. And by that, I mean harsh physical punishments and even being killed. Yeah, yikes. But moving on, let's talk about the actual church's social structure. In the head was the Pope, and from that the church was divided into two parts, the secular church and the regular church. The secular had the bishops who owned land and was kind of like the religious lord, and below them were a priest. In the regular church, they had, well, regular people who had sworn vows of obedience, celibacy, and poverty, the highest being abbots, then the superiors of converts and monasteries, and lastly, the frères, monks, and nuns. Now, I think it's important to say that this was mainly in Western Europe, since there was a majority of the people that were Christian. And because of that, you can still see things that are characterized by its Christian roots today because it was influenced by Western Europe. Anyway, let's go to the next topic. So as many people know, Christianity was and still very much is a universalizing religion. But in the 1450s specifically, Christianity was regionally dominating and spreading very rapidly throughout Western Europe. The 1450s was the time period during which several new European populations were discovering and converting to Christianity. Politically, this affected Europe greatly as the separation between religious beliefs and politics began to become very interconnected. This intersection of the Christian church with politics was seen as essential to the legitimacy of the imperial rule. During this time period, the Pope and the Church were seen by many as having great power and authority. This caused many kings and emperors to use Christianity and the authority of the Church and the Pope as a way to validate their own political decisions, with some even going as far as saying that they could loosen or tighten the forgiveness of sins. Obviously, this created great conflict between political figures in the Christian church. Overall, Christianity impacted politics greatly in Europe, as it led to its great power and authority to be used by imperial leaders in order for them to translate the power that the Pope and the church held onto their own political views. Hi, I'm Leo, and I'm here to talk about women in Christianity and how they were treated. As time went on, more roles became available to women, some that provided opportunities for some women to escape the path of marriage and child rearing. They could acquire literacy and learning and play a more active religious role in the community. By this time, women were most prominent in the church than any other previous time in its history with a number of church reforms initiated by women. Women were treated very similar to men during these times. People such as Saint Catherine of Siena and Saint Teresa of Avila were even later declared doctors of the Roman Catholic Church. Other than the institution of the convent, monarchy was the major European institution allowing women an alternative to marriage and child rearing. That will be all for Histofacts and our journey in early Christianity. Thank you for listening, and I hope you all enjoyed.